Hello and welcome. This presentation is based on my paper, A Proof Riemann's Hypothesis is True. I am Charles Vincent Smith, Jr. On election to the Berlin Academy of Science in 1859, Riemann submitted his paper on the prime counting function pi of x whose value is the number of primes less than or equal to a given positive value of x. This is Riemann's only published work in the field of analytic number theory. Riemann, in research to create an expression for pi of x, introduced complex functional analysis in the study of prime numbers using his zeta function, zeta of s, to make use of a said subset of zeros of zeta of s denoted the non-trivial zeros. His numerical efforts to identify values for these non-trivial zeros led to his famous hypothesis that the non-trivial zeros lie on the critical line with real value equal one-half. Resolving this hypothesis is a serious objective for mathematics. Starting with Riemann himself, this hypothesis has been considered by mathematicians for over 160 years. This is evidenced by the list of significant problems put forth in the year 1900 by Hilbert and in the year 2000 by Schmael. Consider an outline of the proof. Start with the entire function xi of s having zeros identical to the non-trivial zeros of zeta of s in the open strip domain denoted the critical strip. Follow Riemann without his substitution s equals one half plus i t to obtain Edwards result. This expression is somewhat complicated and needs to be simplified for solution. Transform to a z plane, z equals s minus one half, where z equals a plus i t, imaging the critical strip to an open strip domain centered on the t axis. The non trivial zeros are mapped to image zeros in this open strip domain. Next, create an entire function f of z with zeros that are images of the non-trivial zeros of zeta of s. Find a solution for f of z by inspection, then use an orthogonal conformal map to prove this solution set is complete and unique Transform back to the s-plane with s equals z plus one-half, showing non-trivial zeros have the form s equals one-half plus i t, proving Riemann's hypothesis is true. Start the proof with Riemann's entire function, xi of s. In the 1859 paper, Riemann used the following for zeta of s. He then defined his entire function psi of s as the following. Continuing to reduce psi of s, Riemann integrates twice by parts and uses Jacobi's identity to obtain the following. Further reduction without Riemann substitution gives the following for xi of s. This result for xi of s is identical to that obtained by Edwards. Simplify psi of s to obtain an entire function f of z. In psi of s, substitute s equals one-half plus z with z equals a plus i t 
and evaluate derivative terms. This image is the critical strip to an open strip domain centered on the t-axis as shown. Further reduction obtains psi hat of z. Continuing the solution, complete derivatives of psi of x, collect up series terms and remove the natural logarithm by a change of variable to attain f of z. This entire function f of z has zeros in the open strip domain that are images of the non-trivial zeros of zeta of s. Clearly, simplification of the entire function f of z is purchased by the inclusion of the hyper-exponential function mx, which by good fortune is only a function of the dummy variable of integration. Seek a solution by exploiting analytic function properties and symmetries of f of z by first determining real and imaginary parts. For f of z equals zero, these conjugate harmonic potentials must be simultaneously equal to zero, yielding r of a t equals zero and i of a t equals zero. By inspection, either a equals zero or t equals zero satisfy i of a t equals zero identically. For a real and x non-negative, mx and hyperbolic cosine of ax are non-negative. The integrand in r of a zero is always non-negative. The integral cannot equal zero. If r of a zero not equal zero, then t equals zero cannot lead to a solution. All that remains is a equals zero, and t must be a solution of r of zero t equal to zero. Clearly, there is a set of solutions with a equals zero and t from solutions of r of zero t equal to zero. It was a surprise that a solution of this type came about almost by inspection only. However, this ease of solution was mitigated by knowledge is not much known about the solution. Questions immediately arise. As example, do other possible solutions exist? This requires a close look at the properties of the solution to be answered. It is here in the proof analytic function properties of the entire function f of z as well as possible symmetries must be exploited. f of z is an entire function, so r of a t and i of a t satisfy the cauchy riemann conditions and the two-dimensional Laplace equation. This ensures existence of associated orthogonal conformal maps It should be emphasized such maps are definitive for locations and numbers of zeros. Further, symmetry of loci for zeros require if a comma t is a zero for either, then minus a comma t, a comma minus t, and minus a minus t are also zeros for either. Consider a sample of an associated orthogonal conformal map for f of z. Limit, without loss of generality, f of z to the closed strip domain. Further, only zero loci for r and i need be considered. On boundaries a equal plus or minus one half, f of z is not equal to zero, 
and sets of zeros for r on the boundary and i on the boundaries cannot intersect. The zeros for conjugate potentials must interleave along the boundaries as shown. Zero loci are two distinct sets. The trivial locus is i of zero and t equals zero is one, and all the remaining non-trivial loci the other. From symmetry of zeros, non-trivial loci must begin on either of the a equal plus or minus one half boundaries for some value of t and must end at the same value of t on the remaining boundary. Symmetry also requires each non-trivial locus must intersect the trivial locus i of zero and t equals zero orthogonally. These properties prove zeros of f of z occur only where any non-trivial locus r of a t equals zero intersects the trivial locus i of zero comma t equals zero. This proves zeros of f of z only occur on the t-axis and further proves the solution set of zeros of f of z is complete and unique with the form z equals zero plus i t. Transforming to the s-plane shows non-trivial zeros of zeta s have the form s equal one-half plus i t. F of z zeros are a complete and unique set. There are also images of non-trivial zeros of zeta of s. This proves non-trivial zeros of zeta of s are also a complete and unique set. These results together prove Riemann's hypothesis is true. Worthy of note, imaginary parts of the non-trivial zeros of zeta s are solutions of the equation r of zero t equals zero. These are the references used for this presentation. Thank you, the viewer, for your interest and your attention.